Okay, uh, so for those of you who don't have the, who have the program, uh, my name is not Morning Break. Um, <laughs> it's not on there, I'm not sure why. My name is Mike, uh, and my work here, what, what I do mainly is this, uh, this thing. Um, so uh, Juno is interesting for a lot of different reasons, I think. Uh, I only have a short talk to like, tell you about uh, a few different things. Um, so the main thing I want to show you is the debugger work, the debugger UI, which is obviously building off of Keno's work. Keno's work is obviously really awesome. Um, it goes without saying, I think. Uh, it's missing something. It's missing buttons. Lots and lots of buttons. So I like buttons anyway, so I've added a lot of buttons, and this is what I'm going to show you today. So the main thing that's new in the new release of Juno is this over here on the right, left, right, your left, I don't know, um, the workspace. Uh, which is going to show you variables and things. Um, so what I'll do is I'll evaluate this uh, file here um, by pressing the Run button. Um, and what we get over here is a, a view of uh, the variables we have. And maybe you can start to see how this is going to come into view later. Uh, but basically, we can go in here and we can jump into a function and see what's there and uh, documentation if it's there and so on. And values come up so we can do uh, something like this and browse the value, and that's all nice. Um, so now we try our function. I'm going to try and give you like a top-down view of this uh, compared to the bottom-up one where like this is kind of how it might work if you're actually using it. So uh, we can run this function, and we see that we have an issue for whatever reason. Um, and so we want a breakpoint. Uh, eventually, we're going to have a UE for this, which works by kind of right-clicking or something like that to get the breakpoint. You can see up here that's appeared. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't work just yet. So we're going to use the uh, Gallium API, uh, as you were showing a minute ago, which looks like this. And now when we call again, after some pre-compiling, we get the stepper. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. Uh, okay, cool. So this is pretty simple, and it kind of abstracts over some of the details for you, uh, while hopefully eventually allowing you to still dig into what Julia is doing if you want to. Um, so what we have here is we have uh, a viewer for the function. We can jump into values as always. If there was an array or a data structure, we could browse through it um, and, and see documentation and see what's going on. Uh, as usual, uh, these are links, but they're off the screen, so we won't show that. Um, and so we have three buttons here. The first one on the right is uh, the step in button. So we can jump into this function and see what's going on. And we're straight into the source file here, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and we'll jump back out. And uh, the second one over here is the finished function. So we jump out of the function rather than into it. So if we jump out to this, well, what we're going to find is that it's called again. And so we get another breakpoint, And we hit it again. And we, we see what's going on again. Uh, and eventually, you'll be able to kind of add and remove breakpoints as you're going through. Um, so that you can say, okay, I'm done with this, move on to the next breakpoint, and so on. Um, I'll show you another example, which is the GCD example again, in a different form. So we can do this. And over here, uh, up pops the infunx.jl function from base. Uh, and we can just click through like this again, uh, using the move down button. Um, and you can see also on the right here, the, uh, the variables being filled in the workspace as we go through. Uh, I have like some easier ways of doing this in keyboard shortcuts and things, so that's pretty easy. Um, this is actually really satisfying, <laughs> even, even if you don't have a bug. In fact, if, especially if you don't have a bug. Um, it's great. So yeah, that, that's kind of cool. Um, and I will also very quickly show you the, uh, the promotion example, again, stolen from Stefan Stroop. We've had the same idea there. Uh, there we go, that's a little bit weird. So we're over here, we have the promote function. Uh, we can click down and see what's going on. Oh, that gives us a reward. We need to step in. Uh, just step in over here. And we jump around the file. I'm not going to go over it since uh, you already have, but uh, you've already seen that. But you can see it's moving around the file. It's nice to kind of jump around things, uh, see what's going on in base. Uh, it's a really nice way to explore. Like, if you're interested in how any base function works, you can usually just jump into it and see what's going on. And then by the time we finish, uh, the result's going to come back. 
so that's roughly it. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Uh, I think, you know, by design, really, it should be fairly intuitive to use. Um, it should present you with options that are useful to you as you're, as you're working with it and things like that. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's, uh, that's what I have, basically. So uh, I think we can take questions for a while, and then we have a break point. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I assume the plotting works not just in the high term uh, terminals, but, but in Juno you, know, you can do the same sorts of plotting variables as you're debugging, as, as you're working through the debugger? Absolutely, yeah. So the question was, does plotting work um, as it does in uh, the, the REPL demo? And yeah, the, basic, the answer is yes. Uh, I haven't tested it yet, actually, but there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, optimistic, yes, in principle. Um, but, well, uh, you need Judea 0.5 and Gadfi doesn't work there and so on. So, but there is a plot pane and it's like, again, like hooked into the usual display stuff. So it should theoretically just fall out of the same stuff that you always have. Um, and so it's kind of, uh, yeah, you can do, I'll, I'll show you this quickly actually because it's uh, there as well. So uh, you can see our variables here. Whoops. And get like a sneak preview of what the function is going to do. Which is kind of cheating, but <laughs> so yeah. Anything else? What would the financial risk ID be compared to IT and more Um so I think of uh iJulia as a way of working with data and working with uh whatever it is you're working with, I guess. Whereas Juno is a way of working with code. Um and that that for me is a, a way of expressing the distinction, I think. Um, so what, what, we could, what Juno is good at is basically digging into code like this and seeing what's going on. Um, and so if we want to, uh, for example, let's exit this. Uh, let's say we have an error like this and we can find this and uh, uh, we're not getting a good structure from that. Uh, so methods. So here, for example, um, we can jump into this function, and we should hopefully be able to do something like this. Uh, we in base here. So I'm just loading the list of modules so I can pick which module I want to be working in. So I'm going to work in the base module, and then I'm going to make this method definition again. Uh, and now when I do say 1 over 2, I get the, I get the show function embedded in there. Um, and so this is something like iJulia is not that great out. Like if you're making a package, for example, it's not great. It's just like browsing through the files and seeing what's going on, making changes to that package. Uh, it's great if you're using a package. As a user, it's fantastic. Um, but like for, for the more package developer style people, they're going to want to be kind of uh, having these more advanced tools, advanced ways of working with the language, and more flexible ways of working with the language, I think. So that's, that's the answer, basically. All right. Thanks so much. Great time. <laughs> Thank you.